So, hi everyone, I'm Marta Dominguez from Cajal eh, Laboratory of Cortical Circuits and I'm going to present a study based on synaptology of layer year 2 of the transensorhinal cortex in Alzheimer's disease. So, according with this title, maybe you notice that its speech is going to be from a, point, a biological point, point of view. So, I hope you can enjoy it anyway. And I, I start with the Alzheimer's disease. If you know, Alzheimer's disease is the main cause of dementia, accounting for 60 to 80 percent of the cases. And this disease is characterized by a progressive and persistent decline of superior cerebral function, such as memory, orientation, and language. And in the final stage, there is a lack of autonomy, and in general, a, a lack of the social life. Dur uh, during the course of the disease, treatment is the pathological alteration of course, Cerebral atrophy and neurofibrillary tangles, which are made of the intracellular accumulation of uh, hyperphosphorylated tau protein and amyloid plaques, which are made of the extracellular accumulation of amyloid peptide. In addition to this histopathological alteration, uh, other chains have also been described, such as neural and synaptic loss. In addition, the early lo loss of episodic memory, which occurs in Alzheimer's disease patients, related with the progressive degeneration of medial temporal lobe structures, being one of the first affected area the transensorhinal cortex. So for all this reason, we focus this research in an ultrastructural analysis of neuropin of layer 2 of the transensorhinal cortex, attending in the stage of the synapses in this disease. And for that, we use 10 human brain samples with the area of interest, five from Alzheimer's disease patients and five from subjects with non-neurological alteration. To do the ultrastructural analysis, we use the Pfizer microscope. This microscope combines a high resolution file emission set column with a focus ion gallium B, which removes thin layers of materials in a nanometer scale. So, as soon as one of the layers have been removed by the field, the exposed surface is imaged by the SEM, so that the automatic and sequential use of the FIF of the, of the SEM allows to obtain long series of photographs that represent a three-dimensional volume of your sample. So this image is analyzed by a specific software uh, called SPINA that uh, it will be explained in, deta in detail by my uh, lab mate Marta in the last talk. But uh, with this uh, software we can reconstruct in three dimensions the object of interest, in my case the synapses, and we can obtain data about the number of synapses, their morphology, and their spatial distribution. So in relation with the synaptic density, we reconstruct around 1,000 synapses per case, differentiating between excitatory and inhibitory synapses. In relation with the proportion of both types of synapses, we didn't find difference between Alzheimer's disease patients and subjects with non-neurological alteration, but however, the total synaptic density was lower in Alzheimer's disease patients. To do the morphological analysis, we use the synaptic apposition surface. That is me it means that the pre- and postsynaptic membranes are so close and the areas are so similar, so they can be simplified in a unique structure that is the synaptic apposition surface. So in this case, in both groups, the majority of synapses present a small size, lower than 300,000 square nanometers. And again, we didn't find difference in the synaptic morphology between Alzheimer's disease patients and subjects with non-neurological alteration. And finally, to do <coughs> the spatial distribution analysis, we use different parameters about the size and the position, spatial position of the synapses, and we perform a simulation-based envelope. That it mean uh, that this is a simulation of a random pattern distribution. And in this way, we can evaluate if our synapses fit with this kind of distribution or not. And we found that the, in both of cases, the synapses present a random spatial distribution. So we can conclude that the synaptic density is affected in Alzheimer's disease, being lower than in the subject with non neurological alteration, that there are no changes in the synapses morphology in this patient, and that in both of the cases, the synapses present a random spatial distribution. Ah, thank you for your attention.